<laughs> hey team pass today is Friday it's midnight zero 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 Friday May 27 2022 very rare day it'll never happen again <laughs> every every moment is precious you know I didn't used to think that. I thought every moment was a burden. <laughs> no, come on. If you wake up, if you wake up, and I can't, I can't fully, I'm not telling you should, or do you want to wake up? <laughs> do you want to feel alive? Key question. Always. I had the most wonderful psychiatrist as a young man. Dr. James Young, bless his God, he was a good one. He was a, he was a neurosurgeon. He used to go in and operate on brains. You know, people have tumors and stuff. And he 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 was frank with me. He said, "Man, that was it was interesting work, and and the uh, the uh, expertise I had to have to do that was was intense. I mean, he spent years perfecting." techniques of brain surgery of the day but he said god that 90 percent of the time no matter what i did the person i had worked so hard on died that was just the the nature of the the patients he worked on didn't 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 have a good outlook you know it was like their last hope maybe a surgery would save them but you know nine times out of ten it didn't so he didn't he didn't gauge himself by that i respected this he said you know because one time I asked him about his work as a, as a talk therapist. He said, you know, how do you, I mean, I'm, none of my business, but God, you see a lot of, you see a lot of clients, Dr. Young. And I'm sure you've had a bunch of suicides. You know, any psychiatrist has had a bunch of suicides that's been doing it as long as you have. He was, he was, oh God, he's probably 70 years old and he was still practicing because he loved it. And, uh. He, you know, he's he's ethically not allowed to answer a question like that. Have, who's committed suicide on your watch? But uh, I, I mean, I just assume every anybody that has gone to the trouble or their family's gone to the trouble to line them up, and he was he was full price. My parents were paying his <laughs> paying his hourly. I mean, back then, I, I don't know. It's kind of crass to talk numbers, but uh, I mean. It was a shocking <laughs> number to me at the time per hour. I saw the checks my uh, my mom and dad wrote to pay him for my weekly psychiatric visits. God, he's good though. I loved him. God, I probably saw him for two, two and a half years or something. My because my parents it was their idea. You know, I talked I talked about my brothers. They took their lives, and you know, soon after that. Good God, our family was in chaos. Not in chaos, but we're just confused. What, what in the world's happened? My mother, my poor mother. God dang, any, any mother that has to go through the loss of a child twice, God dang, my mother was, my mother was almost angelic, the, the gracefulness with which she handled that and, and didn't fall apart. You know, I've, in retrospect, she had intensely bad feelings about herself and her mothering, and it's got it wouldn't. She overpersonalized it. God, her mothering was so, so attentive and nurturing. My my mother, my mother was a beautiful mother. She really was. Her the the deaths of my brothers had nothing to do with any any uh, shortages of her her motherly instincts. God, she was a good mother. She would not work until, and she was a brilliant, smart woman. 
her father. Her father wanted her to be a, an attorney. She had the skills, and God dang, that was 1945. It was like, you know, one attorney out of a hundred was a woman. No, women didn't go into law. It just wasn't done that. My, my, my grandfather, Howard Payne Cameron, her father, Patricia Ann Cameron, was his only child, and she was a girl, and he said, God dang, that girl can do anything she wants. He, he was a Henry County farm boy, Henry County, Missouri. He grew up on the farm. <laughs> Him and his older brother, Hein, they couldn't stand the farm life. And they, I, don't, I don't know how this all happened, but God, this is a wonderful part of the family legacy. Hein and, and Howard, the two oldest boys, God, they hated the farm. It was a fucking grind. 1900, 19, how, 1900, 1902, they were born. They're grinding it out on the farm in the, in the, 1900s to 1915s, and then I had a vision. God, life could be different. There's, there's people that live in the cities. There's, <laughs> you know, there's businessmen. There's lawyers. So uh, Howard, he became a, he became an attorney. He somehow bootstrapped himself to, uh, to law school up in Chicago. He, beca he became an attorney, and then he had a long, prosperous career with the Commerce Bank. It's headquartered here in Kansas City. Commerce Bank is like sacred in our family because Howard, Howard was a was the uh, vice president of the trust department for years and God that was a big deal in our family. Howard Cameron, Henry County farm boy and, and his brother Hein. Hein became a very successful businessman and I think he's in the insurance trade. I'm not sure. So it's fun it's fun explore your family. Explore the explore their stories. It gives you a feel for it finds God there's a bunch of stuff. My dad's dad. God, he was fun. Frank, his, he, he's from Denmark. His, his real name was Franz. Franz Friedrich Haas. And it is Haas. You know how annoying it is when, when people mispronounce your last name. They, you know, they call me Haas. No, it's H-A-S-S. -S. Haas is H-A-A-S. And there's about 20 of them for every one of me. I'm special. <laughs> Haas. Grass. Pass. Ass. Yeah. Guess what I got called in grade school? Hass the, <laughs> of course. Yeah, so I resonate with Hasselhoff about the teasing of the last name. God, God, I didn't like my last name in, in third grade. I got brutalized for my, my last name. Now I love it. God, Hass, Hass. And that's how we all, we've always pronounced it. Nobody ever said Haas. That's spelled different. So, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're walking with me through my transition into Smokey. You know what? There's a coil inside there. And there's a big old hunky battery in here. It heats him up and that fluid, that's a bunch of vegetable oil. It's a bunch of, it's, it's HG and VG. They have this formula. There's, like one of them is a, I, uh, the, the vape guys, you vape guys, you guys are artists, man. You guys are so into the whole vaping thing. It's so much more interesting than traditional tobacco. You know, I probably could get into that cigar thing. Good God, the cigar thing is a whole thing. I, you know, I don't have time to explore it all. I just, <laughs> I just joined a wine club. <laughs> I, I, I always thought wine was... Uh, just an affectation to impress your your fancy friends or something. I, I don't think it is. I mean, it can go that direction, like just like art collecting or you know, all that stuff can can be a a snobby sn signal that that you use to impress your big shot friends. But the, the people that do it authentically, God, they're interesting. There's people that are passionate about cigars and wine. And art, and those you can see. I'm getting real. I can sense the people that are real and the ones that are faking it. You know, they're they're pretending to be interested in, in 
cigars and wine and and uh, and uh, art. They're faking it because they think it'll impress the fancy people. <laughs> That's I came up with that term, the fancy people. I mean, it's it's very tongue in cheek. The fancy people. Who are the fancy people? It's it's meant to be a bit of an also insult, and I wouldn't use it for an authentic. Uh, successful person. The, the, the people I call the fancy people are, are the phonies. You know, the ones that are, the ones that are, uh, what do they call it? <laughs> climbers. The climbers. They're trying to, trying to achieve status. If you're, if you're doing all that crap to achieve status, you're just incredibly funny to me. All right? You know, if you truly have a passion for, for fine wine, you, you go for it. You become the best at you know, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be interested in wine, but God, I'm I'm tired of slamming cheap beer to get a buzz. I'm not doing that no more. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and talk to you guys with a with a fine glass of something. Start educating myself that these wine clubs are wonderful. You give them all this feedback on their their website about you know they send you six bottles and and I got six bottles. Of course, I just you know kind of slammed them away. <laughs> And, and didn't pay that much attention, but I saved the cards. I kind of remember the ones I liked, and, and they, they want my feedback. Well, you know, we sent you six. What, what'd you like? What, what, what didn't you? What are your comments? And they're, they're going to tailor the next shipment. Now, I put that on pause because uh, I'm broke. <laughs> I, can't, I can't afford the, uh, the... They allow you to put it on pause. <laughs> I said, oh, I, I pay very close attention to the automatic payments that come out of my checking account, and, and I highly recommend that you do that, And but you know exactly. I have six or seven automatic payments that come out of my Commerce Bank checking account, all right? That way, I don't have to write checks, I don't have to, and it always is paid on time, but I know exactly what's going to hit it at, at exactly what date. The only variable are my, my gas bill and my electric bill are slightly variable because those you know those aren't a they, they fluctuate a little depending on my consumption of gas and electric but everything else I just I never even had a smartphone service I never had I never had mobile service until recently and and the possibility of going on this trip up to Toronto and, and I'll probably talk about that that's that's changed a little bit I think it's still going to happen but uh so yeah I'm going to be out on the road I need actual phone service. I, I, I don't even like to travel that much. So I, I've just always relied on my smartphone and Wi-Fi. You don't even need cell service. You know, it's just like the minimum you can get it for is, is uh, I did have it at one point and, and all I needed was data because I do all my voicing and my texting through data. So I was, I was paying, I had, Six gigabytes of data with with Mint. I think it was ten. I got I got a big chunk of data for I think it's twenty five bucks a month because because I prepaid I like paid for a year. And I do that. You get a big discount if you pay if you pay the whole thing a year's worth. Be disciplined. You know, they give you a big old you know twenty thirty percent discount if you pay for a year's worth of of their. Six gigabyte plan. They gave you a big old discount, so I did that for a year. That was smart. That was good. That's all I needed. That was fine. But then I was like, I don't even need that. I'm on Wi-Fi most of the time. I don't even need their their uh, and they they run through the T-Mobile network. That's Mint M I N T. I, I I like them. They're they're good. They're reasonable, and there's a bunch of God. It's competitive. You know, shop around a little. The the, the primary thing is is the data plans because. Everybody gives away the phone and the text. That's all. That's all free. It's 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 all about how much data. You probably don't even know how much data do I use. I don't know. Well, you need to you need to calculate how much data do I need every month. Do I use ten gigs? Do I download movies? What do I do? I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't use that much data because I don't. I don't stream movies and that kind of stuff. I. I uh, I just do data. I don't. I don't stream like you know entertainment content that much. I do. I do that at home on my Wi-Fi. So find out how much data. You know, everybody's paying seventy bucks a month for their for their phone plans, and, and you know 
Why, why do you need unlimited everything? So anyway, well, <laughs> I'm speaking out of both sides of the mouth because uh, my Wi-Fi provider, Xfinity, I get plenty of speed. I don't even know what it is. It's the cheapest plan. I've had it for three years since I've lived here. Xfinity, Wi-Fi, or, you know, Internet. That's all I want. I don't want TV channels. I don't want nothing but access to the web, the World Wide Web. So they gave it to me for two years for 20 bucks a month. And, and I signed an agreement. And they said, you know, after two years, we're then we're going to start charging 35 bucks for this. Yeah, that's fine. So it, it switched over a couple months ago. So now I'm paying 35 a month to Xfinity uh, Internet access. And it's, it's a very nice uh, Internet access. And it comes into my router and, and all my devices are hooked up to that router, either through their Wi-Fi or I got them, I got them Cat5 cabled into that router so everything runs off that router and the and it's all wired the, the 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 xfinity you know that that router is there's there's a cable running over the house and into my apartment so it, it's a hardwired thing and you know it, it's gone out like once or twice in the three years i've had it it's very reliable it hardly ever goes down very good internet and you know I don't, know, I don't know if it's fast enough. It seems to be, but you know, Google, they keep sending me this stuff that says, well, you know, we only give you one gigabit per second. And I, I think I'm only getting, you know, 50. <laughs> I, I don't think mine's that fast, but I, I don't even know why I need one Google. And I think they want, you know, 60, 70 bucks. I, I don't think I need that. Thir I think $35 gives me all the pipeline I need. So, <laughs> yeah. Smoky. <laughs> and then, this is it. God, these are cool. I don't like to buy water, but I, I, I occasionally do. You just have it around you. You get those little uh, flavor packets. The sugar-free. There's no calories in there. And you, you put them in there. Put the lid on. And you shake it up. God, that's tasty. Because I'm... Oh God. God, those are good. I bought some of those today. I went down to Walmart. Wally World. <laughs> I love Walmart. God, they're good. Hmm. <laughs> I'm in I'm in the middle of Olathe. I'm in downtown Olathe, Kansas, and and we are the county seat. That means we got the courthouse. <laughs> we uh, at Johnson County, like I said, we we are we are like the hub of all the money in Kansas. Most of it emanates out of the act, the business activity in Johnson County, where there's a bunch of bunch of high dollar companies headquartered here i can't name them all but you know sprint sprint started out here as a little nothing and turned into a big behemoth they got they got a big old campus out there but now now they got bought out by what t-mobile so who I mean, half the town seems to to be uh employed by sprint or half the office space seems to be uh leased to sprint i don't know it's a it's, sprint's a big deal in this town um, I'm right. The government stuff is big in Olathe, Kansas. We're the we're the county seat, so we got the county courthouse, or we did. The one they built in '54, they just tore it down. Tore it down. And they, <laughs> my dad would have said, <laughs> "Tore down a perfectly good building. <laughs> Had a lot of life left." <laughs> my dad didn't like. Government being extravagant, <laughs> in my, as my dad would have said, yeah, tore down a perfectly good build, building and they, they built the Taj Mahal. <laughs> oh my God, that new courthouse is fancy. I haven't been inside it yet. Uh, okay, I'll say it. My dad would say, you know, that was a one quarter of a billion dollars. <laughs> they spent one quarter of a billion dollars of, of taxpayers' money to build that thing. I know Dad was beautiful. I know, but how'd they get that money? Well, we gave it to him. You didn't give it to him. <laughs> they told they, they forced it out of you. You didn't have a choice whether you gave that money to Johnson County. You don't have a choice. You really don't. Taxes are not voluntary. They're not. <laughs> you know, the stuff you give to your church, that's voluntary. I, I, uh, <laughs> I do a bunch of 
volunteering with, with my best friend Barb. She founded a, a very, very uh, unique project here in Johnson County. We're very affluent, but we have homeless people. And, and I was one of them five years ago. That's how I know Barb. Probably about seven years ago, I think. Barb, he's like at, you know, she always noticed Olathe is kind of a hub. Not a hub, but there, there's a lot of homeless people. A lot of the homeless people in Johnson County, somehow they end up here in Olathe. And I'm not sure why. I think because Olathe is a little bit kind of rural feeling. And, and there's, there's like all these nooks and crannies of, of uh, spaces and railroad tracks where you can kind of sneak away and, and have a little campground and, and, and there's, there's not that many suburbs in Johnson County where you could get, get away with with rough sleeping that, that's what the Australians call it rough sleeping you know sleeping outside sleeping in parks sleeping in your car <laughs> my, oh my god my buddy Steve uh, oh, god he's he's the most creative homeless guy I ever met he said you know what I did he said I used to sneak into uh, use car lots at night. He said, you know, half the cars aren't even locked. He said, I'd, uh, I'd look around, make sure there's no cameras, and he said, I'd uh, I'd find a big old, you know, <laughs> Crown Victoria with a big old back seat, and I'd, I'd crawl in there and, and spend the night <laughs> in a used car lot in, in the back seat of a Crown Vic. <laughs> I said, God dang, that's, cre that's creative. I, did, I, I wouldn't have thought of that. Rock on, Steve. Steve's a good one. God, he's funny. He's, you know, I've known so many cool people from my homeless time. I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> uh -huh.